890. I'm Steve Williams on AM560, The Answer. Right now, clear and 66. Your next news update, 730. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. So 60 Minutes had the story. I mean, frankly, yet another story, as far as I can tell, of massive failure by the federal intel and law enforcement agencies. This is a uh, videotape that apparently was turned over by British police to the FBI shortly after 9-11. And how many years ago was that? Oh, my God. And uh, 23 years later, we're seeing it. It's a video of a reputed Saudi spy named Al Bayoumi casing D.C. and the sites that were the targets of the 9-11 attack. Here's a description of the tape that was aired on 60 Minutes and, and portions from it. A voice on the video says in Arabic, I am transmitting these scenes to you from the heart of the American capital, Washington. Washington. This video, unsealed in federal court this week and obtained by 60 Minutes, was recorded in the summer of 1999. The man behind the camera is Omar al Bayoumi, who the FBI says was an operative of the Saudi intelligence service with close ties to two of the 9-11 hijackers. Time is 6 p.m. The video was filmed over several days. <laughs> Bayoumi recorded entrances and exits of the capital, <laughs> security posts, a model of the building, and nearby landmarks. <laughs> In this portion of the video, Bayoumi points out the Washington Monument and says, I will get over there and report to you in detail what is there. He also notes the airport is not far away. And uh, there's references in there to the plan, which are taken up by former, uh, well, retired FBI agents that 60 Minutes talked to, Richard Lambert and Ken Williams. The plan and what that means clearly means that he was casing these places. I mean, I shouldn't say clearly, but probably, like probably means casing these places for the Saudi-backed al-Qaeda operation to attack America. Uh, that's what Richard Lambert thinks. He's now a consultant to the families of 9-11 victims that are suing the Saudi government. Well, it is another very large brick in a massive wall of evidence that at this point indicates the Saudi government was complicit in the 9-11 attacks. Mm -hmm. So uh, why did it take so long? Retired FBI agent Ken Williams. Did somebody really mess this up? This seems like a really big thing this, to just being made public. If that was missed, then shame on us for missing it. If it wasn't missed, then I would have to ask the question, what was done with it? Yeah, those are good yeah, questions. Yeah, really, we want to know. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not putting this on Ken Williams necessarily, but... Maybe Christopher Wray can appear before another House or Senate committee and tell us that it's an ongoing investigation. He's not allowed to talk about it. Uh, for more on this and other geopolitical matters, please be joined by Stephen Bucci uh, for our weekly conversation. Bucci served America for three decades as Army Special Forces officer and top Pentagon official, now visiting fellow at the Heritage Foundation's Allison Center for Foreign Policy Studies. Uh, so, uh, Stephen, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, if we missed it, shame on us. And if we didn't, then uh, there's some questions that need to be asked. That's sort of a statement of the obvious. Well, uh, you know, to be frank, uh, while this is the first time I've seen that particular video, uh, it, it was been pretty clear from the get go that there were members of the Saudi government and even some of the royal family, which when you say that with the Saudis is like, there's hundreds of them, so it's, right. it's not like 
you know, that's a four person group or something like that, uh, that there were members of even the Royal family that supported Al Qaeda who frankly support, uh, the, the radical, uh, uh, elements within Saudi Arabia, even against their own, you know, cousins and brothers and everybody else in, in power, uh, there has not been any evidence that I have seen, including this, that, you know, the king and the crown prince and the people in charge of the Saudi government were a part of this conspiracy. Well, obviously that's what the families are trying to prove. Well, I mean, Uh, but, but, but this guy, this guy's a Saudi spy. He's with yeah, the Saudi I, inter- no, I'm, there are people who were on the payroll of the Saudi government, including obviously this spy who was doing this. But there are people all over the Saudi government who have radical views. Yeah. I, uh, and I, but I, are not th- those views go beyond supporting their government. They would like to see the, the royal family thrown out. Well, I, I they don't think they're good people. I understand, but 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 I mean, fr- in, from a Western legal tradition, the fact that there's some Wahhabist element in the in the Saudi government, but it's not doesn't necessarily include MBS or something like this. That doesn't absolve the Saudi government. In fact, uh, it confirms their liability. I mean, if you uh, act uh, on behalf of a sovereign in a way that runs afoul of the law or international law then your government is still responsible, just as we have when, say, police officers run afoul of the law in this country. Uh, I think you're taking it a step too far. If we have people that, you know, we had spies within our government in the FBI, Mr. Hansen, uh, the, the guy at the CIA. Yeah. They did terrible things, and people died for what they did. They weren't following the orders of the government. They were operating on their own. I don't know, and and frankly, no offense to the FBI retired guys who uh, 60 Minutes interviewed, the fact that this guy was in America under, you know, working for the Saudi government on one hand, but doing this video, there's no evidence that this video went to his bosses in the Saudi intelligence service. It could have been sent to al-Qaeda. Well, I mean— Well, I mean, we don't know, but I mean, maybe the British could tell us since apparently the British turned it over to the FBI. But but I mean, part part of this, too, the other piece of this is, again, just uh, massive intel failures in advance. Um, you, the lack of disclosure. This video should have come out whenever they had it in their possession, just because you need to bring America along in understanding what was happening. I mean, you may uh, be very familiar with the evidence and and I may be to a lesser extent, but, but I mean, a lot of the American people aren't and, and and they wouldn't even, we we wouldn't even be talking about it if it wasn't for the nine 11 families that are pursuing it and good for them and putting pressure on the political class in DC. That's just want to sweep this away. So we don't make anything uncomfortable for MBS and the Royal family. I mean, it's just the failure to disclose the failure. I mean, the failure to do your job and then the failure to disclose your failures. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, we should have sussed out this whole thing, the the whole conspiracy leading up to 9-11 for sure. We missed it. Uh, We missed it tremendously. There were pieces of it here, pieces of it there. Nobody was talking to each other. That's a failure. I'm not arguing with you there at all. Nor am I arguing that we should just say, ah, this is not a big deal. Why are these people even worried about this? They should continue the investigation. I'm just saying this, the evidence that I have seen, including that video and listening to those FBI guys, I don't draw the same conclusions today just with that evidence that they have drawn or that you're drawing right now. I don't think that necessarily means the Saudi government is liable for what some of its actors were doing, frankly, uh, on the side. They weren't doing that uh, that I have seen under the orders of the government. If it turns out, as we continue to investigate, that it was under the orders of the government, then that's a different story. Then we have to look a little deeper and take some other actions. That has not been proven yet to any degree in my mind. But we need to keep investigating. What about, I mean, did Saudi Arabia finance the attack? 
the, the government of Saudi them. Arabia? Yeah. No. Individuals who may have been in the Saudi government who have their own funds, clearly, yes, there were. But, you know, not the people in charge. I don't think there has been adequate evidence yet to show that this was a governmental policy to do this to us uh, it, it, at all. Frankly, the Saudi government is as worried about Al Qaeda as we were at the time. But and the, maybe but, we should have been more worried because we kind of missed them doing the thing. But uh, but 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 it, it's but not worried enough to root out elements in its government that are sympathetic, if not collaborating with Al Qaeda. Uh, they failed to do that clearly. Hmm. Uh, I wanted to get to uh, something else. Um, uh, 23 of the 32 NATO member countries are on, now on track to spend at least 2% of their uh, GDP on national defense. That's up from just 6 of 32 in 2018. Uh, so from the Trump presidency to now, we've seen a uh, almost fourfold increase in NATO members living up to their NATO commitments. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it, it's very interesting. Uh, one, because Trump was the one who got that trend started when supposedly, you know, he was going to destroy the, the alliance by demanding that these folks do what they had agreed to do. Uh, and the other part is because the Europeans realize that Vladimir Putin is a threat and if they don't do their uh, get their defense houses in order that uh, they might be the next target or at least part of it. So uh, one part was positive and good, the, the actions that Trump took ahead of all that, but uh, the, the rest of the motivation, unfortunately, has been an, of the negative variety because now they're scared. Uh, and instead of having Trump saying, look, I'm not going to just do this out of the goodness of my heart because we're the Americans and we got big pockets. Instead, the problem is you got Joe Biden who's saying, well, we're going to help with Ukraine, but, you know, maybe not today and, and tomorrow we'll do some more. But the day after that, you know, I'm still not sure if I might change my mind. Uh, that weakness and that back and forth, frankly, is far more uh, motivating for these guys to do their job because they're not sure America is going to come through. At least with President Trump, he told them what he would do and what he wouldn't do and under what circumstances. That's uh, a better way to be an alliance partner than uh, leaving our, uh, our allies scratching their head and wondering whether we're going to show up or not. Uh, I wanted to get your reaction to uh, something else. Now, this is a couple of weeks old, but um, I don't think we had the chance to talk to you about it yet. And if we did, and I'm misremembering, then uh, that's on me, but it bears revisiting anyway, because I don't want this thing to get memory hold the way that so much news does because of the nature of our our news cycle these days. And I'm talking about the Nancy Pelosi tape that uh, that came out a couple of weeks ago uh, from her vehicle uh, taken by her daughter or at least made public by her daughter, I should say, uh, the documentarian Alexandra Pelosi uh, on, on January 6th. And her conversation, Nancy Pelosi's conversation with her chief of staff. Take a listen. We have responsibility, Carrie. We did not have any accountability for what was going on there, and we should have. This is ridiculous. You're going to ask me in the middle of the thing when they've already breached the, the uh, inaugural stuff that, that uh, uh, should we call the Capitol Police? I mean, the uh, National Guard? Why weren't the National Guard there to begin with? They thought that they had sufficient resources. No, there's not a question of how they have been. They don't know. They clearly didn't know, and I take responsibility for not having them just prepare for more. I take responsibility for not having them. Trump offered the National Guard, we understand. Uh, and uh, apparently it was rejected or it wasn't responded to. We've got... All of these former uh, DOD officials, uh, acting defense secretaries and so forth, uh, uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, curious decision making leading up to it. We've heard from Capitol Police Chief at the time, Stephen Sun, about how unusual the briefings or lack of briefings were leading up to January 6th, given the threat assessments and so forth. 
at the sergeant at arms, the conversation McConnell was having with his sergeant of arms, Pelosi was having with hers. Uh, we don't we know very little about this, despite that star chamber. Well, probably, of course, because that star chamber they set up. But but the, the January 6th reckoning, it may come in par from the Supreme Court when they rule on 1512. But 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 what Pelosi had to say and what we still don't know about January 6th. And the reason we don't know it is because of Christopher Ray's FBI and to a lesser extent, the other intel agencies. Uh, how, how do you react to that that video and January 6th, now three years removed? Uh, well, again, I, I don't want to sound like a know-it-all, but I'm not surprised by, by that. I'm surprised that she said it out loud, even yeah. though it was in, right. in a private, you know, relatively private conversation. But, you know, I, I know how that system is supposed to work in D.C., who has authority to do what, and to, to put all the blame on President Trump uh, and and say he should have did, done this and he should have done that when the Dems did actually not just nothing. They took actions that hindered uh, the use of, of the National Guard. Uh, the, the sergeant at arms of the House who works directly for the Speaker, that is that person's boss. They're the only person in the building that can order the, the uh, sergeant at arms of, of the, the house around is, is would have been Mrs. Pelosi. And she didn't, she did not act. She just stood there. And, and in some cases, uh, there's evidence where she told people to stand down. We're not doing that. Uh, that's on her. But then she had the gall to sit there during those hearings and make it sound like this was all on president Trump. That, that was, such a setup, and because there were no uh, adherence for President Trump's side of the argument on the committee, nobody could bring up any witnesses, no one could ask the questions that would have brought this out. That was a total setup, and uh, this should cause Nancy Pelosi to have some accountability, but I'm not holding my breath. I don't know about you. Well, McConnell too, right? Yeah, absolutely. They, they, these guys have the responsibility. Interestingly, the speaker has a bigger role in the security of the Capitol building than the, the uh, 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 Senate majority leader. It's really on the speaker of the House. That's just the way it's set up. That wasn't because of Nancy Pelosi. That's the system that's there. Uh, and she didn't do anything. Uh, McConnell should have been in her face saying, hey, we got to do something. But it, the decision is really on her. I, I mean, I, I, I go back to Stephen Sun's public testimony interview with Tucker Carlson. You know, the interesting thing about the detail that Stephen Sun has provided, the former Capitol Police chief who was Capitol chief uh, on January 6th of 2021, the detail he's provided hasn't been disputed. It's just been ignored. But nobody's just yeah. nobody's disputed what Sunda said. Nobody that he names in terms of the chains of commands, as well as the conversations and the briefings. What he just des- his description has gone completely unchallenged, just ignored. And that to me is very telling. Well, it's when the majority of the press, the legacy press, is already on board with the, the cover up and the railroading. Uh, of course, they're not going to question it. They, you know, if it's uncomfortable, they ignore it. Right. Uh, you know, or come up with a crazy explanation. In this case, they do the the uh, ignoring it track, uh, and it's a shame. The American people are not served. Um, the 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 political system loses even more credibility. It's just a, a totally wrong way for this to have gone down. Yeah, uh, I hope I. Again, I- uh, not holding my breath. Well, I know, I, I but but on Thursday night there's an opportunity, and I hope when when Trump is inevitably called the leader of an insurrection by Biden or words to that effect, he says, you know what? Uh, don't take my word for it, America. Uh, go uh, watch Stephen Sun, Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sun's interview with Tucker Carlson, his testimony uh, before House committees, because unless President Biden, you would like to challenge Stephen Sun's account. Well, you, if you'd like to impugn his reputation, the former Capitol Police chief, that, that's the way I would do it, too. Start to get people's, uh, start to broaden people's minds and f- 
point them in a direction of information they probably haven't accessed, you know? Yeah, it, it would be the way to do it. Um, but I'll bet if that comes up, if he says it that way, one of those moderators will jump in and rescue Biden before he can uh, yep. screw up the answer. Well, they're going to need to in that event. Stephen Bucci served America for three decades as Army Special Forces officer and top Pentagon official. Now a visiting fellow in the Heritage Foundation's Allison Center for Foreign Policy Studies. Stephen Bucci, thank you as always. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Yep, thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. There's only one radio show in Chicago talking about today's biggest stories and telling you what they really mean. That show is this one. Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies Supplements. Changing the world one life at a time.